Hi there, everyone. Timothy here. Welcome to Campus Live. Tonight is Funky Sock Night. We're so excited that you're here. Tell us in the live chat, uh, what is the craziest pair of socks that you own? Um, describe them to us and then take a picture of yourself wearing them and upload it to Instagram with the hashtag Bethel Campus Live or send the photo to a leader for your chance to win a Dutch Bros gift card tonight. Um, we're looking forward to seeing all those. We already have some and they're really, really great. Um, send those in. There's also quite a few of your leaders that have some pretty crazy socks themselves. So uh, you'll see some of those in today's stream as well as on that hashtag on Instagram. We're so glad you're here. Uh, stay tuned for some awesome fun stuff. And now we're going to head over to Nate and Emily for an awesome game. Hey guys, hey. we've got our funky socks on. Hers are way cooler than mine. Yeah, show them off here. Yeah, I've just got some Flying basic pigs. Argyle. All right, we've got a minute to win it game here, but we are socking it up to make it a little more challenging. So we're putting on our Defy socks right now, going up to our elbows here. The grip is on the back of our hands, not on the inside. <laughs> so our goal, we are competing against each other, and our goal is to get this orange cup all the way down and back up top within one minute. I'm putting up one finger, although it's hard to tell with the socks. So we're going to use our socks, and we're going to get started in three, two, one, go. Comment my name in the comment sections because you think I'm going to win. Or mine, because I'm obviously doing so well. <laughs> You're doing they multiple at a time. I'm trying not to, but they won't come up for it. so hard with socks on your hands. No! Oh. Ah. Ah. Whoa. Uh oh. It feels like an eternity already. Okay, here we go. I'm going faster. Remember to comment who you think is going to win. Me. It's a I safe bet at this point. I haven't I looked at the timer, but I think our time is. No! Doesn't Down at it, the bottom. I have to get it out? What do I do? Well, I think <laughs> the amount of time left. There we go. <laughs> you won. If you commented my name, you are correct. <laughs> nice job listening to me. So I want to challenge you guys at home to see if you can do this to your family, if you can do any better than what we did on that. Now we're going to head over to Joey. Let's give it up for Joey. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Joey. And today I'm wearing these crazy cool finger socks or toe socks, whichever one you decide. Oh, I guess the right one is toe socks. But anyways, I just realized that I have an amazing ability of playing the piano with my feet, and I would love to share it with you guys. Please, enjoy my song. Thank you everybody for listening. Please stay tuned for the rest of our regular scheduled program. Thank you. I'm Ro. And I'm Esther. And we are here to play a game tonight. And so we decided since it's funky sock night that we are going to match as many pairs of socks that we can. And in this pile there are pairs and there are some socks that have no pairs. Mm. So we have a timer set. And during that timer, we are going to match as many socks as we can. And at the end of it, we will see who matched the most socks. Okay. So here we go. Is our timer ready? Should we mix? Mix it again. Mm. Okay. All righty. Timer begins now.
<laughs> All right, let's count. Esther, do you want to count? You yeah. count first. Yeah. Or me first. Whatever. Actually, let's do you first. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna be able to beat that? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Whoa, whoa! Winner, winner, chicken dinner, Esther. Woo hoo! Oh yeah! Yeah, you lost it. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy you got to see my wonderful, talented toes. <laughs> I'm so happy about that. Hey, down in the comments, tell me what you guys think, how good it was. Let me know how you guys think it turned out. Because I think it turned out pretty good. But anyways, I am here to give you guys some riddles. Some awesome riddles. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> anyways, are you guys ready for some awesome riddles? All right, the first one. I have uh, no doors, but I have keys. I have no rooms, but I do have a space. You can enter, but you can never leave. What am I? I will repeat that. I have no doors, but I have keys. I have no rooms, but I do have a space. You can enter, but you can never leave. What am I? Now, does anyone have any ideas? Heart, that one's a good one, but it's not the right answer. Uh, is there any more guesses? A cabinet? No, unfortunately, you are not correct. The answer is a keyboard. The answer is a keyboard. And that is the correct answer. Good job, everyone, for giving for uh, getting that one correct. I think Carter got that one. Uh, next one, there was a greenhouse inside a greenhouse. Oh, no, no, inside the greenhouse, there was a white house. Inside the white house, there is a red house. Inside the red house, there is a lot of babies. What is it? What am I describing to you? I'll say it again. There was a greenhouse. Inside the greenhouse, there was a white house. Inside the white house, there is a red house. Inside the red house, there is a lot of babies. What is it? A hospital? Mm, unfortunately, you are not correct. Any more guesses? I want to see your guesses in the chat below. Wally? No, unfortunately. Nate, that is not the correct answer. Three, two, one. The answer is a watermelon. I am so sorry for you guys. You did not get that one correct. But this next one, you probably will. I got this one pretty fast. Um, what is it? Blah, blah, blah. What is it that you can hold even? Oh, my word. What is it that you cannot hold for even 10 minutes, even though it is lighter than a feather? Something that you can't hold even for 10 minutes, but is lighter than a feather. Any guesses? Yeah. Any guesses for this one? Good job, Carter, to get the last one correct. You did a good job. You better not be cheating, by the way, Carter. No, I'm kidding. Anyways, any guesses? A fire? No. Unfortunately, Nate, that is not correct. Your breath. Good job for whoever got that one. Good job. It is your breath. Anyways, next one. 
what kind of room has no doors or windows? Now, I didn't really get this one, but I guess it's kind of more of a joke, I think. I don't know. But any guesses? What kind of room has no doors or windows? No answers? I believe, and now there is no room that doesn't have doors or windows, but it is a mush room. Mush room. Did you get that? Mush room. Mush room. Oh, anyways. <sighs> Next one. I call the trees my home, yet I never go inside. And if I ever fall off the tree, I will surely be dead. What is it? Or what lives in the tree that falls? Ah, I don't know. I call the trees my home, yet I never go inside. And if I ever fall off the tree, I will surely be dead. What is it? Any guesses? Hmm. Leaf? Leaf? Oh, wow. Jeez, you guys are saying leaf. And you are correct. They are leaves. Leaves, leaf, same thing. Yes. Good job, everyone. Dude, give yourselves a round of applause. Every single person got it there. That's good. I like that. Um, next one. A girl is sitting in her house at night that has no lights on at all. There is no lamp, no candle, nothing. Yet she is reading. How is this possible? How do you think that's possible? How do you think it's possible for this woman to be reading a book in pitch black darkness? Any guesses? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe she's got super x-ray vision. You ever think of that? Any guesses? Hmm. Looks like we got, oh, that's a good one, Caleb. Um, but it is not an audio book. The woman is in fact blind and she's reading braille in the pitch darkness because that does not require any light at all. But good job, good job. Yes, good job, Carter. Braille, nice. All right, next one. If you have me, you want to share me. If you share me, you haven't got me anymore. What am I? Hmm. If you have me, you want to share me. If you share me, you haven't got me. What am I? Hmm. Any guesses? I want to see it in the chat if you guys got this one. Pizza? Nope, unfortunately. Food? Nope. Unfortunately, those are not correct. Hmm. Any guesses for this one? If you have me, you want to share me. If you share me, you haven't got me. You know, pizza is pretty good because in high school, everyone begged me. I would go to Little Caesars and people would always ask me for a slice. And then I would get to school and I would have one slice left. Yes, that's a good answer, but it is not the correct answer. The answer I am looking for is a secret. It's something that you want to share, but once you share it, it's no longer a secret, so you, know, you don't have it. That's a good one. Good job, Carter, you're getting all of these. Jeez. All right, next one. If you are running in a race and you pass the person in second place, what place are you in? Hmm? Are you in fourth? Third? Maybe first place? I don't know. What do you think? If you are running in a race and you pass the person in second place, what place are you in? You know, it's kind of funny. That kind of sounds like a rhyme, honestly. Jeez. Oh man, you guys are very smart. You guys did get it. It is second place. If you pass second, then that means second place went from second to third, which means you're in second place. And first place is still up here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. You guys got it. You guys got it. You guys know what it is. <laughs> All right. What fruit 
<laughs> what fruit is always sad? What fruit is always sad? Oh, any guesses? What fruit is always sad? Maybe a pineapple, maybe a watermelon. Hmm. Onions, oh, that's, I like the onion one because they always make people cry because they're so sad, I don't know. But yes, if you said blueberry, which I see like three people saying blueberry, you are correct. Congratulations for all them blueberry fans. Shout out to all the blueberries in the chat, not the pears, blueberries. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure this is second to last one before our ultimate one. All right. Here's the last one. Well, second to last one. What is it that has a bottom at the top of them? Now, actually, this one's pretty funny. Any guesses? Any guesses? What is, what is it that has a bottom on the top of them any guesses hmm any guesses at all what is it that has a bottom at the top of them maybe it's like no it's not cheese i i actually know what the the answer is logan you are correct and Carter, you guys are correct. It is your legs, your legs. Cause you know, you have your legs and then on top of your legs is your bottom. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's how you can get that. All right, last one. And this is a really hard one. This is probably, I did not get this at all. So I'll be surprised if anyone gets this one. What is next in the sequence? J f m a m j j a s o n any guesses i'll give you guys a couple seconds to figure this out hmm j f m a n any guesses i don't see any guesses? What is the next sequence? All right, I'm seeing some answers and I want you to tell me why. Why you picked the answer that you picked. Just to make sure you guys got the correct answer. Because I know the letter is D, but why? Is it some kind of encryption thing? Do you have to know Morse code? I don't know. Oh, that's a, you did not just guess that. Yes, Carter, you are correct. They are the letters of the months, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. And then the last one is December, but yes. Anyways, let's go send it to, thank you guys so much for joining me. And now off to a promotion video for a youth group. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hey everybody, Bye. my name is Mike Stead and I'm the youth director at River Oak Baptist Church. And we do Zoom meetings on Wednesday night from 6.30 to usually about 7.30. Um, so drop by. We'll be doing some games. We'll spend a little bit of time in God's word and have some fun. Look forward to seeing you. Have a great day. Hey everyone, so glad you guys are here. Uh, just gotta want to give you guys a few announcements for uh, this week and next week. Uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to keep up to date with everything that's going on. Um, if you like playing video games, please connect with the Campus Life Leader about what the Discord chat is so you guys can play with some of your friends and some of the Campus Life Leaders. Next week, is going to be pizza club so make sure you have a pizza in front of you as you join us at 6 30 next tuesday um, and we're also next to giving away a pizza a free pizza delivery to your house uh, for the winter 
uh, how to win. You got to take a video of your best trick shot and send them to uh, a campus life leader or either post them on Instagram, hashtag Bethel Campus Live. I'm going to say that one more time. Take a video of your best trick shot and send it uh, to a campus life leader or post it on Instagram at Bethel Campus Live. Make sure you join us on uh, this Friday for our Zoom hangout. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of the same things. It'll be super fun. Um, stay tuned to the end of the club, and we're going to be giving away a Dutch Bros gift card for the winner of tonight for the best funky sock. So make sure you stay to the end. We'll be announcing the winner then. Thanks, guys. And I'm going to transition over to our real life center. So I grew up, uh, there were six of us. I am the youngest of four boys. My parents have uh, passed several years ago, but I have my three older brothers that we haven't seen each other because we all live in different parts of the country, but we call each other often and enjoy each other's company. Uh, currently, I have my wife and my two kids. Um, and a dog. So I uh, grew up with both of my parents and I had an older sister and then two more siblings came after me so explains a lot. I'm a middle child. Um, I had an older sister and then a younger brother and a younger sister. Now my family um, is even bigger. Um, obviously I'm married so Nate um, is now my family and Nate's family as well. So um, I grew up in a house with my mom and dad, my two younger sisters. I had two older siblings, but they were both adults by the time I could really like form my own memories. So they were already out of the house. So that meant I grew up as the oldest child. But now, uh, my older siblings have families and kids of their own, and we see each other like really frequently, so my family is still super connected. Well, I grew up with my mom, my brothers, my grandma, and off and on with my cousins and my aunt and my uncle. But it was mainly just my mom, my brothers, and I, and my grandma. Um, my family now has extended. I found out that I had four more brothers and another sister that lives in California on my dad's side. Um, I also got married, so I have a husband and his family now. So growing up, we weren't uh, Christians at all. And as the youngest, I got to see my brothers make their choices and mistakes and and the uh, hurt that caused them. So that's when I decided that there's got to be something better. And it was a choice of my own to become a Christian. Um, although I had a discussion with my mom, it was, it was definitely a choice of my own. My family has shaped my faith um, because I was brought up in a Christian home. So um, from the time I was born um, all the way as I was growing up, my family went to church um, every Sunday and took me along with them. Um, I grew up um, hearing um, about God and knowing that he was real. Um, my grandma actually, um, when I was three, my grandma was teaching a uh, release time class. Maybe some of you have been to one of those. Um, so I went to that when I was three. My grandma was teaching it and that's actually where I first um, asked Jesus into my heart. Um, and then, like I said, continued to grow up going to church and learning and growing um, and finding out more about who God is and letting uh, my church family shape my faith. Um, and then in recent years, um, just kind of with uh, my parents getting divorced and just other challenges within my family, um, God has used those to teach me and to grow me in my faith. 
um, to trust him more um, and to learn to love the way that he does. Uh, I kind of grew up in church because my parents had us go every week and then when I was in high school I was a part of a Bible study led by my brother but I guess uh, those two things aren't like really negligible but my f- journey of my faith has really been mostly my own. My family shaped my faith by taking me to church when I was younger and raised me as a Christian. Um, when I got older, it was my choice if I still wanted to go and follow Jesus. They didn't push me to believe. They just let me decide on my own. And I decided to follow and they stood by my side with whatever I decided. So now I have the understanding that no matter what choices my kids make or the, I make, God's still in control and God loves us no matter what. So my relationship with God takes a lot of stress off of me worrying about um, what's going to happen next, um, how things are going to turn out. I just trust God that he knows uh, what's going on and he'll have the best for us. When I first heard the question, what does family mean to you, I kind of thought of like, um, you know those old friends you have that you sometimes don't see for a while, but once you are together again, it's like you never were apart. Um, you just kind of pick up where you left off. I feel like that's um, at this point in my life how I feel about my family, um, just because I've gotten really busy. Um, and I think that's something God wants to work in um, me, is to spend more time with my family, but right now, um, that's just kind of what came to my mind was you just pick up where you left off and it's not you don't hold like hard feelings towards people because you haven't seen them because you just get it like it's life but you know that you love each other anyways um and then god changes the way that i see family um because in so i i have my family here on earth but i also have my family like god's family i'm part of his family and they don't they're not completely separate they overlap (laughs) so um if you are somebody who is following jesus um you're part of god's family so my parents my mom and my dad both follow jesus so they're also part of god's family um and in god's family god is our father um which means that anybody else who follows jesus is my brother and sister in christ so even though my mom and dad are my parents here on earth they are my brothers and sisters in Christ so it's just a new way to see um, family and to learn to love people Uh, family and I guess relationships in general I find to really be the most important thing in this life I I don't really see any difference between family and close friends from like a practical view I don't call my friends like my brothers and sisters but I feel mostly the same way towards them I don't know how that perspective has been shaped by my faith specifically, or if, like what part of that's just my own personal views, since I uh, grew up in church, but I believe that is a biblical point of view for the most part. I know Paul it always, like the Apostle Paul, always addresses members of the church as brothers in Christ, showing that regardless of blood ties, they are all family. Well, family to me means a lot. Um, They will always be there for you when you need them. Um, They love you unconditionally. And I... And I will always love them for that. So for me... Knowing that God has chosen me to be his son, um, even though I grew up in a solid family, my parents loved me, it's nice to know that God loves me more, more than I could ever understand, and that his love and forgiveness is never ending, and that he is always going to be my father no matter what I do. Uh, God doesn't stop loving me because I stopped loving him. God will always love me and always be looking out for me.
being adopted into God's family is like having an extended family. I have a father who is God, and I have all his people as my brothers and sisters. I get to hear his word every Sunday and every day that I talk to him and read his words out of the Bible. Being able to bear witness to someone truly reborn in Jesus has really taught me a lot. I think like the big change that you see in like almost every case is that they learn to really care for people they otherwise have no personal connection to. I think they gain something called a servant's heart, knowing that every other person is valuable in the eyes of God and is therefore worthy of care, love, and respect, even if they know that other person isn't a part of God's family. And so God is the perfect father. Um, and so where earthly humans who um, are good parents can make mistakes or fail, or where there are bad parents uh, who just totally don't even um, invest at all, um, God is the perfect father and he um, fulfills our, our need to be loved and to be seen and to be known. Um, and he gives us an identity. He tells us who we are, that we are his. Um, and then there's also an aspect of when you're adopted, you're chosen. Um, and I think about how people talk about, um, you know, like your family, you don't get to choose, but your friends are the family that you get to choose, right? And that means, means a lot that you get to choose these people to be your family. And so I just think that's so cool that when God adopts us into his family, um, we are being chosen by God, um, that he chooses us to be his, um, and that we, we just have this father that loves us so much. Hey guys, how was that for a fun stream? I really enjoyed that. Hope you did too. I have our funky sock contest winner for you guys. Uh, we're going to ha- need to ask, uh, present Timothy, um, present Timothy, what, uh, what, who's the winner tonight? Awesome. Congratulations to our winner. Uh, and thank you so much, present Timothy, for helping out past Timothy with this one. You are a real MVP tonight. Um, also to our winner, congratulations. You will get uh, a message from a Campus Life leader soon with your, uh, for information for your gift card. Don't forget for next week, it's Pizza Club and we have a, um, a pizza delivery giveaway that we're doing. So remember that, that trick shot thing that Joey did earlier in the stream? You, if you try that too, record a video of yourself doing it, upload it to Instagram with the hashtag Bethel Campus Live or send it to a leader for your chance to win that pizza delivery next week. And make sure if you enter, this is important, that uh, a parent or guardian at your house knows that you will be getting that pizza delivery if you win and they are okay with it. Um, Since things are a little weird right now, I just wanna make sure everyone's on the same page and okay with that. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again right here next week for uh, our pizza club.